Good evening and welcome to the October 3rd City Council meeting. If you'd please stand and join us in the flag salute. Tom Howie is going to lead us this evening. Thank you very much. You can be seated, please. We have several uh, proclamations this evening, the first one being for Domestic Violence Awareness Month, which is October 2017. I'd like to call up June Sano, our clinical specialist, and Barbara Garcia, who's the Grants Administrator for the House of Ruth. Ladies, would you please join me? <clears throat> Nearly one in every three teenagers, one in every four women, and one in every seven men in the United States have suffered severe physical violence by an intimate partner. <clears throat> Victims are deprived of their autonomy, liberty, security, and face tremendous threats to their health and safety. The problem with domestic violence is not confined to any group or groups of people, but crosses all economic, racial, gender, educational, religious, and societal bar barriers, and is sustained by societal indifference. And whereas the crime of domestic violence violates an individual's privacy, dignity, security, and humanity due to the systematic use of physical, emotional, sexual, psychologi psychological, and economic control and or abuse, <clears throat> Approximately 15.5 million children are ex exposed to domestic violence every year. And whereas victims of violence should have access to medical and legal services, counseling, transitional housing, and other supportive services that, so they can escape the cycle of abuse. The House of Ruth provides life-saving domestic violence services for residents of Los Angeles and San Bernardino counties. And whereas the city of Chino works closely with the county of San Bernardino to offer choices, <clears throat> batters, treatment, a court-mandated program to help individuals identify and manage ang anger issues. And whereas the city of Chino is committed to working in partnership to increase public awareness of domestic violence and to eliminate it through prevention and education. Now, therefore, I, Eunice M. Ulois, mayor of the city of Chino, do hereby proclaim October 2017 as Domest Domestic Violence Awareness Month and urge all citizens to work towards the elimination of domestic violence in our community. <clears throat> thank you, Mayor Uloa. And council members, thank you. This is such an important um, proclamation for the month of October. I was just looking on the uh, website today since we were going to be accepting the proclamation and just cities across the nation have different ways where they are um, just trying to raise awareness about um, just the family stress and the family violence that goes on. Um, and so we are glad as a city that we are taking this seriously. Um, as a city, we do provide counseling services for families and individuals. Our counselors work at really trying to provide a safe atmosphere for people who come in. And um, we also, just so that you know, we do um, have the choices classes for batters who um, have realized that they are using violence in their homes and there's, uh, it becomes very dangerous, so they do attend classes. We have four current men's classes and we are um, possibly going to be adding a women's batters class as well. And this is just a really important way to help individuals look at ways to break 
the cycle of violence. And we also work uh, very closely and rely very heavily on House of Ruth for um, people who do need a safe place to go once they realize that they're in a dangerous situation. And we're so thankful to have Barbara Garcia here to represent House of Ruth. Thank you, Mayor, City Council, and thank you to Ch the City of Chino, who has invested in House of Ruth for many years, and hopefully, uh, you know, to create more awareness about domestic violence in our communities. I left some uh, materials up on the table if you're interested about October's Domestic Violence Awareness <laughs> Month, and it's where the entire state turns purple, and to create awareness and end the cycle of violence and violence in our communities. Thank you. Thank you, ladies, for being here. And it is a terrible thing um, to not only ha create violence against someone, but to have violence created against you. So um, thank you for all the work that you do, and hopefully we'll stop a lot of those cycles. Thank you very much. <clears throat> Our next proclamation is Fire Prevention Week, October 8th through the 14th, and I'd like to call up Fire Chief Tim Shackelford. You're casual this evening. Yes, I am. <laughs> yes, you so are. So before you do that, th we'll have a presentation in a little while from a couple members from the Chino Valley Professional Firefighters that will explain the t-shirt, but are it you is a little unusual for me to be up here in a t-shirt. But you're going to dance, right? Uh, you hope not. Actually, <laughs> would be best. We would have some issues with that. You'll understand why in a minute. <laughs> Whereas fire kills more than 3,000 people in the United States each year, and 80% of all fire deaths occur in the home. Taking simple safety precautions, such as identifying and removing everyday home fire hazards, can help prevent the majority of home fires and home fire deaths. Proper installation, regular testing, and maintenance of smoke alarms reduce fire deaths by half. The National Fire Protection Association 2017 Fire Prevention Week theme, Every Second Counts, Plan Two Ways Out, reminds everyone to develop a home fire escape plan with two ways out of each room, an outside family meeting place, and practicing in twice a year with members of the household is critical in escaping a fire safety, safely. The Chino Valley Fire, Chino, I'm doing it again. The Chino Valley Independent Fire District is committed to the safety of life and property from devastating effects of fire. And the Chino Valley Independent Fire District is joined by the City of Chino, City of Chino Hills, County of San Bernardino, and the Chino Valley Fire Foundation, as well as other emergency service providers, businesses, schools, service clubs, and organizations in their fire safety efforts. This week commemorates the Great Chicago Fire of 1871, which killed more than 250 people, left 100,000 homeless, and destroyed more than 17,400 buildings, and burned more than 2,000 acres. And whereas the Chino Valley Independent Fire District calls upon the people of the Chino Valley to participate in safety uh, in fire prevention activities at home, work and school, and to take the steps needed to make their homes and families safe from fire. Whereas the Chino Valley Independent Fire District will hold the annual open house at the Fire District Training Center on Saturday, October 14th, 2017, from 11 to 2. Now, therefore, I, Eunice M. Eloa, Mayor of the City of Chino, do hereby proclaim October 8th through the 14th, 2017, as Fire Prevention Week. Chief. Mayor Yeloa, members of the council, thank you. We appreciate you bringing this forward. Uh, on behalf of everyone at the fire district, uh, we do appreciate the efforts of the city of Chino to make the public aware of fire prevention and the significance. Uh, although we are a, a developed nation, we still have a significant problem with fire across our country. Uh, the mayor covered a lot of statistics there, a lot of vital information. Uh, I can break it down with the four C's of fire prevention. Uh, some quick tips and then I'll provide uh, some information where the public can get some additional assistance. The four C's, uh, cooking, candles, cleanliness, complacency. Sorry, I'm trying to do this from memory. 45% uh, of all fires in the home are due to cooking, uh, unattended cooking or cooking mishaps. And about 35% of fire fatalities are due to cooking in the home. So major issue, most people, when I cook, it's a problem. But for most, it's not. Um, use some common sense and things like turkey fires, things like, things like that. There are some issues with that with the public. So uh, there's some tips available. Uh, the candles, unattended candles are a major issue. Uh, there are some great alternatives now that are battery powered. They simulate candles, also some that provide a very nice scent. 
If you do use candles, and I know some folks for religious purposes, uh, they are, are, are very set uh, for using candles, please use them responsibly. Do not leave them unattended. Uh, not one person that we've ever encountered planned to set their house on fire by having a candle uh, lit and left the room. So use extreme caution there. The cleanliness piece. Uh, mostly common sense, but the basic things. Don't leave combustible materials next to things that generate heat. The fireplace, space heaters, any other appliances. Uh, that lint trap is there for a reason in your dryer. It needs to be cleaned out. All those socks that the dryer eats, you do need to find those at some point. Uh, if they accumulate in the dryer, you can have a fire, which can spread to the rest of your home. And finally, the complacency. Many of the things that the mayor mentioned, uh, no two ways out of your home. Check your batteries and your smoke alarms and make sure that they're replaced. The lifespan of a smoke alarm is about 10 years. There's some great alternatives available, especially for our senior population that has difficulty changing the batteries. Uh, they can be applied with double stick tape and they have a 10 year lithium battery. And finally, I uh, encourage the public to join us at Open House on the 14th at the Fire District Training Center on Schaefer Avenue, 11 a.m. to 2 p.m. And if you need additional information, you can go to our website, cvifd.org. And thank you again, Mayor. And the October Mayor's Home Beautification Award, I'd like to call up Tim Heitkamp and his daughter, Laura. Could you join me? I'd like to present you with a certificate thanking you for your continued improvement and maintenance of your home, resulting in a substantial contribution to the overall appearance of our community. And you can see the picture of their home on the screen. And we also have a certificate for you from Supervisor Kurt Hagman. Uh huh. Here's your very own picture of your house. Oh, that's nice. Thank you very much. <laughs> You're welcome. Here's a pen. A pen, too. Mm hmm. And another kind of pen. Thank you. And the coveted yard sign. <laughs> Should you choose to put this in your yard? show everyone that we're very proud of all the work that you do for your home Thank and you improves the much. whole neighborhood. Now, who does the work? Uh, my wife. Your wife. <laughs> <laughs> she's not here. And she's, she's not, not here. here. Would you like to? Uh, just thank you very much. I've been uh, in the house for 30 years. And, uh, and he's been wanting this for 30 years. <laughs> <laughs> well, you got it. <laughs> yeah. But I just wanted to thank, thank everybody here. Thank you, and thank you, Mayor. Oh, you're welcome. Yeah, you're welcome. It's very nice. Well, it's a very beautiful home. Um, your name will also go into our yearly drawing, and should you be the one that's selected, you'll be able to come to our um, annual State of the City oh. address and be recognized. Thank you. Okay, you're welcome. Thank you very much for being here this evening. Next on our agenda is public communication. And before we go to the written request to speak, we have a request from uh, Rod, Roy Totten from Calvary Chapel, Chino Hills. And at this time, I'd like to invite anyone who would like to join us to stand for our invocation. Let's bow our heads before the Lord. Heavenly Father, Lord God, we thank you, Lord God, just for the privilege, Lord God, that you have given us, Lord, to live in this great city. And, Lord God, we pray, Lord God, as uh, uh, we continue, Lord, to be uh, active in our communities here, Lord, we ask, Lord God, that you give us wisdom. And, Lord God, we, we thank you for our mayor, our councilman, Lord, our, our fire department, our, our police department, Lord God, for the wonderful jobs that they do and we ask Lord now that you just continue to give them wisdom as they make decisions Lord God that affect each and every one of us here Lord God that they be decisions Lord God that would uh, Lord bless and uh, Lord uh, prosper our city Lord God and uh, Father we we pray Lord God that you just uh, continue Lord God to, to make this a, a great place for families to live and so Lord we thank you now and Lord we ask it in Jesus name Amen Thank you very much. OK. 
Okay, next our written request to speak. Uh, speaking of the fire department, we have J.R. Ryan and Casey May who would like to address the audience this evening. Good evening, Mary Lola and members of the council. Thank you for having us here tonight. We just want to bring quick attention to uh, the fire department doing uh, breast cancer shirts for the month of October. This month and this year particularly is a lot is very special to us because if you notice on the back of this t-shirt it says Tammy Strong. Tammy is the wife of one of our captains um, within Chino Valley. She's been recently diagnosed with breast cancer and is progressing very quickly. Uh, we quickly put these t-shirts together and and the fundraiser as well, myself and Casey. Um, it's going really well. We've almost sold a thousand shirts. We just want to bring attention to that tonight. Uh, we have shirts for each of you guys. We're going to be selling them on October 14th at the um, open house as well. Okay. You can also, we'll give you guys information. We can order them through Casey and get the shirts out to anybody that wants them. But we just. So if the public can't make it to the open house, can they just contact the fire department? They can contact us directly and they'll get them in contact okay. with us. So we just wanted to. Uh, bring that to everybody's attention it's uh, hard for all of us and it's a good cause so oh, yeah it is a good cause we appreciate the uh, are you uh, gentlemen going to be participating in the uh, the pink shirt video with the uh, you know Casey and I might shirt. not but uh, there's uh -huh. there's a lot uh, there's a lot of other guys yeah. that can can dance and do that kind of stuff so but for the month of October you will see all the firemen in Chino and Chino Hills wearing this exact shirt so and okay. so support a great cause well prayers and for your wife Thank you. Thank you very much for being here. All right. Thank you. If you can get us the information, uh, we can put it on our cable. Absolutely. So we thank can get you. it out there, get the word out. Perfect. Yeah. Thank you. Appreciate it. Okay. Next is Aaron Tobin from the Champion Newspapers. Hello, Mary Yola and the Council. I'm just here to invite everyone. Um, to the Champion Newspapers Write and Risk Workshop that we are hosting through uh, California News Publishers Association. We're actually the only newspaper in Inland Empire who's hosting this conference, so we're very excited to have as many members of city government as well as the public out. Uh, they're going to be discussing uh, open meeting laws, um, rights to social media access, and other um, information act access that uh, not only journalists but members of the public can have access to the uh, legal counsel for California News Publishers Association is going to be leading the discussion. Um, her name is Nikki Moore and we're going to be having it at the Karen Owens, Carolyn Owens building on October 9th from 3 to 5. Okay, Erin, and is there a cost to attend the workshop? It's completely free, so okay. no costs, no, uh, no requirements. So October 9th at three? Three to five. Okay, great. Thank, Thank you, very, you much. very much. Next request to speak, Mr. Wynn Win Williams. Thank you, Mayor and members of the council. Is this the camera that's on? Um, I've got something to show you here. Can you zoom in on that, Annie? This is a, this is a notice that I can't go in Your code enforcement decided I cannot go in my house. <clears throat> they called me up one day and they said they'd like to go in my house and I told them no. I says, I still live in the United States. I says, a man's home is his castle and you're not coming in my house. They went and got a search warrant for my house. I'm not a criminal. I was a firefighter for 33 years. I gotta read something to you. Fourth Amendment provides the right of the people to be secure in their persons, houses, papers, and effects against unreasonable searches and seizures shall not be violated and no warrants shall issue but upon probable cause supported by oath or affirmation and particularly describing the place to be searched and the persons to be seized or the things to be seized. This is, this is the second one here. The Fourth Amendment protects the rights of the people to secure in their persons, houses, papers, and effects against unreasonable searches and seizures. U.S. Constitution Amendment 5. Very 
core stands the right of a person to retreat into his own home and there be free from unreasonable intrusion. I can't go in my home. The Supreme Court has stated there are certain permissible standards to be applied in connection with the issuance of a search warrant. The proceedings by search warrant is a drastic one and must be carefully circumscribed so as to prevent unauthorized invasion, invasion of a sanctity of a man's home and privacies of life. You know why they came in my house? I don't know. I was never told. It doesn't say on the search warrant. And now we've got a problem. There's going to be a lawsuit. I came and talked to Mr. Ballantine. His attitude was, this is the way we do it in Chino. If you got a messy house, we're going to come in and we're going to check it out. So that's what they did. They came into my house and looked in my house with a search warrant. I wasn't home. They didn't leave a copy of the search warrant. I had to come here and get it. How would you like somebody to come in your house and rummage through everything? You got a dirty house. You're not living up to our standards. Is that right? Come on. Let's be real. How would you like to go home and find out you can't go in your house? My wife and I haven't lived in the house for two years. We've had to live at our son's house. He's not living there. He's in a condominium. He bought the house. He was going to move into it, but he let us move into it because my wife got breast cancer. She was in there, and then we had a head-on collision with a drunk driver, and we couldn't go upstairs in our house. And so we haven't been there, but Mike Haru calls me up and he says, we want to go in your house. And I told him no. And so they came in the house. The next day I came and I says, okay, where's the search warrant? Oh, um, I'll have to check with the attorneys on that. They were supposed to leave it at the house. That's the law. You can't just do a search warrant without giving a person a search warrant. So. He's got a smirk on his face. He's smirking while he's telling me this. He, he's beat us. He beat us. He's, he's a heck of a guy. You got the right guy for that job. What, it, what I think of, you, you, Mayor, is I think of when several years ago when times got tough and you had to lay off some of the employees and it was stated that you cried. You felt sorry for them. You feel sorry for me? I haven't been in my house for two months. I get to go in and clean it up. They, 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 at first they said you can't go in at all. And then they decided the folly of that. Well, what are we going to do? They, we can't go in, you can't clean it up, can't do anything. So they say, oh, well, you can go in from 7 in the morning till 7 at night. Well, thanks a lot. And so here we are. My, my wife and I are senior citizens. Smirkin' Mike has got us locked out, and he gave us a list of things that need to be taken care of. Half of them are lies, and I'd like Mr. Ballantine to know that half of them at least are lies. I'd be glad to go over any of it with you and show you that, but you probably don't care. And Mr. Yeah. Williams, it isn't that uh, we don't care, but when things turn into a legal issue, we're restricted on certain things that we can and can't do. So I would like our attorney to address you, please. Okay. In regards to that, silver is silver and something is your um, the attorney that does code enforcement. Huh? Code enforcement. Well, not yeah, code enforcement, but he's also the uh, prosecutor. Thank you very much. Their lawyer was out at the house when they were breaking into my house. And that's not allowed. That, by law, that's not allowed. And now they are going to be sued also. So I don't want them involved in sending us any more information. OK? They're, they're now part of the lawsuit. All of the police officers that came there are part of the lawsuit. Everybody that was there from the city is now part of the lawsuit because it was an illegal search warrant. It doesn't say what they're looking for. It doesn't say 
uh, why they they were the it, why it was issued. There's no affidavits. There's nothing. It's just a general search warrant. Go anywhere you want. Make copies. If you look at the search warrant, it says make copies of anything you want. Like I'm a I'm a common criminal. For Christ's sake, I got a dirty house. Is that is that criminal? Come on. What are, you, what are you guys trying to do? Is, it, is this how you get your top 100? I'm sorry, I, I do get emotional about this. If you had somebody come in your house and rummage through everything that you have in your house, you'd be upset too. Oh yeah, they left the refrigerator door open. It got 115 degrees, the refrigerator quit and everything and it spoiled, so thank you for that too. And I think that's about all I have to say. Um, Smirk and Mike is, is a great job take care of him. He, he, he has absolutely no compassion for anybody. All he wants to do is win. Madam Mayor and members of the council, as, as you accurately stated, this is an active code enforcement matter as admitted by the speaker and uh, especially in light of the threatened litigation, I would advise the council not to respond and the code enforcement process will address his concerns. Thank you. Uh, next request to speak is Jamie Harwood. Jamie. Good evening, Council. Tonight I'm here on behalf of the Chino Valley YMCA. I have two things. First off, December 2nd will be our seventh annual reindeer romp. 5K and this year 10K as well. So come on out. If you really want to run, we got two laps for you so you can do a 10K. Uh, something we've been wanting to do for a while and you know we think this year is the, the time to do it. We had over 600 participants last year. Of course, we're aiming for over 700. So uh, it'll be a great day. Got Santa coming. We got a great announcer. We got a great singer. Dr. Cabrera from Don Lugo High School will be there. So it's gonna be a great day. Uh, second point, I'd like to introduce Damon Kolaluka. Damon is the new uh, CEO of the West End YMCA. Damon's going to say a couple words. All right. Mayor, City Council, staff, Den 7, how you doing? Good. All these kids are going to need uh, credit for coming to council meeting for government. They're going to be coming too, up, that? giving us our name, oh their my names. God. How hard. <laughs> Did you guys know that? You have to come up? Ugh. Anyway, I'm pleased as punch to be here to, in front of you and to be part of the, the Chino community. I'm just so excited to uh, start uh, my tenure as the CEO of the West End YMCA. West End YMCA serves uh, all the communities in the West End from Fontana all the way down to Chino Hills. And uh, I think that Chino's my favorite so far, so I'm glad to be here. And uh, I look forward to, to working shoulder to shoulder with you all in making uh, this place one of the best places for families and, and kids. Well, welcome aboard. Thank you. Next is Melissa Campani, Supervisor Hagman's office. Well, good evening, Mayor Ulola and council members and staff. Um, Supervisor Hagman asked me to stop by tonight to invite you to his next Coffee with Kurt. Uh, and this time we have a very, very special guest, which will be Mayor Pro Tem Tom Howie. Um, this uh, is open to all constituents of the 4th District, so we hope to see you all there. And to let you know that our, our next meeting is going to be taking place at the Chino Police Department Community Training Room, and that is at 5450 Guardian Way in the beautiful city of Chino. This will be Saturday, October the 21st, and it's going to be early from 8 a.m. to 9.30, because I understand it's a very busy day in the city, so we want to make sure you have time for all of your activities. Thank you very much. Thank you, Melissa. And the next request to speak is Maritza Sanchez from Pac-205. Good evening, Mayor and members of the Council. My name is Maritza Sanchez, Cub Scout Pac-205 Den 7 leader. 
I'm accompanied by our wolves and proud parents, and we are here to extend an invitation to you and members of our community to be part of a noble community service project, Socks for Homeless Veterans. Socks filled with toiletries will be donated to homeless veterans currently housed at March Air Base on November 11th. If you're interested, we kindly ask that you bring your donations to Taco Dudes restaurant located at 5065 Riverside Drive here in Chino before November 1st. Over 90 socks have already been donated by our Chino Active Store located on Philadelphia Street. We are currently seeking travel-sized items such as tissue, deodorant, mouthwash, chapstick, band-aids, toothbrush, toothpaste, individually wrapped snacks such as cookies and crackers, just to name a few. Our sponsor, Taco Dudes will be serving the homeless veterans lunch, and our Cub Scouts will hand out socks filled with toiletries on November the 11th. If you have any questions, please contact our Community Service Project Coordinator, Marcy Harris-Lara, at 909-636-1141. And Gavin, go ahead. Go ahead, yeah. Um, um, Okay. Um, let's work together to help our homeless veterans <coughs> visit Taco Dudes located on Riverside Drive and make a donation. God bless America. <laughs> Thank you. Marissa. Marissa, would you have the boys stand up in front and face the audience? And then um, Ariana, would you give them the microphone so they can each say their names? We have to get this on TV. <laughs> My name is Earl East Ludwig. <laughs> My name is Austin Robert Moverstead. My name is Adrian Rodas. My name is Travis Maurer. My name is Brian. <laughs> Just Brian. My name is Samuel. <laughs> My name is Samuel Cervantes Villa. <laughs> My name is Gavin Lara. My name is Nicholas Sanchez. Thank you very well, much. Well, thank you, thank boys, you. for being here this evening. Okay, those are all the written requests to speak that I have. Is there anyone in the audience that would like to address the council on an item that is not on the agenda? Okay, seeing none, it's time for the students to come forward and give us your name, your teacher, the school you go to, the teacher's name, and the class that you're taking. Come on. You're here to get class credit. You have to, have to be on TV. Okay, let's quiet, quiet down so we can hear the names. Shh. Andy okay. Espinoza, um, Miss Carpentier. And school. school. Don Lugo. And class. <laughs> class. Uh, government. Okay. No. My name is Amber Vigno. I go to Don Lugo. My teacher is Miss Carpentier, and it's for government. Okay. Um, my name is Skylar Karnbach. I attend Don Lugo High School, and my teacher is Miss Carpentier for government. Hi, I'm Roxana Benavides. Um, my teacher is Ms. Carpentier. Um, she teaches government and, yeah. Oh, Don Lugo. <laughs> Sorry. My name is Vincent Espathia. Um, my teacher is Ms. Carpentier. I go to Don Lugo High School and this is for government. My name is Brianne Thomas and I go to Don Lugo. My teacher is Mr. Beloso and I'm taking econ. Okay. Hi, my name is Sandra Rodriguez. Uh, I go to Don Lugo. My teacher is Ms. Carpentier, and this is for U.S. government. Hi, my name is Monica Cortez. I go to Don Lugo, and my teacher is Mr. Beloso. Class? Uh, senior. <laughs> <laughs> <No>. <laughs> <laughs> senior, I gather that. <laughs> oh, yeah. One of us. 
I want to see your, I want to see your employment application. <laughs> not, not that class. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um, my name is Monsieur Rodriguez. I attend uh, Don Lugo. Um, my teacher is Miss Carpentier, and she chooses government. Thank you. Uh, I'm Destiny Gutierrez. I go to Don Lugo, and my teacher is Mr. Beloso, and it's for econ. Okay. My name is Casey Rosales. I go to Don Lugo, and my teacher is Ms. Carpentier, and this is for government. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, my name is Antonio Gomez. I go to Don Lugo. I have Mr. Pope, and it is for government. Okay. My name is Cynthia Garcia. I go to Don Lugo. My teacher is Mr. Conacher, and this is for econ. My name is Kaya Flores. I go to Don Lugo, and my teacher is Mr. Pope, and I'm here for government. My name is Mackenzie Novares, and this is for government. My teacher is Ms. Carpentier. My name is Nancy Gonzalez, and my teacher is Ms. Carpentier, and she teaches government. Hello, I'm Guadalupe Flores, and this is for um, government. My teacher is Ms. Carpentier, and I go to Don Lugo High School. Thank you. My name is Angeles Marquez, and I go to Don Lugo High School, and my teacher is Ms. Carpentier, and this is for government. Okay. My name is Richard Hadma. I go to Don Lugo High School, and my teacher is Ms. Carpentier, and this is for U.S. government. Thank you. My name is Julie Barajas. I go to Don Lugo. Um, and this is, uh, I have Ms. Carpentier and this is for government. Um, my name is Priscilla Pacheco. I attend Don Lugo. My teacher is Ms. Carpentier and for government. Hi, my name is Valerie Contreras. Um, my teacher is Ms. Carpentier and I go to Don Lugo High School and this is for US government. My name is Genesis Garcia and I go to Don Lugo High School. This is for government and my teacher is Mr. Pope. Hi, my name is Tyler Hitt. I go to Don Lugo High School. This is for government, and my teacher is also Ms. Carpentier. I'm Joshua Turner. I go to Don Lugo. My teacher is Ms. Carpentier. This is for government. I'm Max Magana. I go to Don Lugo High School. My teacher is Mr. Pope, and it's for U.S. government. Thank you very much for being here, and thank you for coming early. A lot of students wait until the last week of school. Okay, next item on the agenda is consent calendar. Do any council members wish to have any items pulled? Okay, then I would entertain a motion. There's a motion from Councilman Earl and second from Councilman George. And the item passes unanimously. Okay, under new business, item number 11, well number five, repairs. Our staff report this evening will be provided by Mr. Jose O'Leary, our assistant city manager, public works director. By water to our Benson treatment plant. Um, in 2015, this well experienced equipment failure and we had to remove it from service. Additionally, uh, well five was not originally designed to deliver water to the Benson treatment plant. We would put it directly into our system. And because now it goes into the treatment plant, uh, it really doesn't operate as efficiently as, as it should. And so there was a few factors why we took it out of service, mainly because of the malfunction of the equipment. Tonight, staff is proposing to get this well back online and operational. Uh, we prepared plans and specifications and a notice inviting bids was published on Planet Bids. Best Drilling and Pump Incorporated of Colton, California submitted the lowest responsible bid in the amount of $96,838. In addition, staff is requesting uh, authorization to spend up to $9,683 in contingencies, bringing the total contract amount to 106,521 if necessary. That concludes my report on this item. I'd be happy to answer any questions you may have. Thank you, Jose. Um, are there any questions of staff prior to asking if there's any comments from the audience yes mr george thank you um just a quick question have we used best drilling and pump ink before 
No, this is the first time we're going to be using this firm here. But they do, uh, they seem to be responsible. They've provided all the backup documentation and, and uh, have the licensing and experience for this type of work. Okay, well, they, they, uh, there's like about almost a $20,000 difference between the uh, first bidder and the second bidder. Is there, is there some reason theirs is so much lower that, that, you, that you can think of? That the other guy was high. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thanks, Earl. Thanks, Earl. <laughs> We're trying to save you money. Um, <laughs> yeah, uh, many times, again, you know, they look, it depends on their subcontractors, where they're getting equipment from, how they approach the bid. Um, this firm seemed to sharpen it pretty well. We, we, that's why we have strong project management and inspectors over these, this type of work uh, to make sure that they do things as we uh, specified in our specifications. Yeah, I mean, just it's. I'm sure that you know. And thank you very much for the fact that this is twenty thousand dollars cheaper. But the um, I just you know get nervous sometimes when it's that that much difference between you know, number one and number two. So. Any other uh, questions of staff? Are there any members of the audience that would like to address the council on item number eleven? Okay, seeing none, then I would uh, entertain a motion. Been moved by Councilman uh, George, second from Councilman Elrod, and the item passes unanimously. Next on the agenda is Mayor and Council reports. As we enter October, I want everyone to be aware of the following events. This Friday, October 6th, from 3 to 5, at the Chino Youth Museum, which is located at 13191 6th Street, is the Youth Museum's first Friday event, which will run the first Fridays of October, November, and December. This is a free event that offers fun for the entire family, including entertainment, art projects, activities, and learning opportunities. For more information, please call 909-334-3270. Also, I'd like to give an early reminder that the annual Halloween Spooktacular will be happening on Tuesday, October 31st at the Chino Spectrum Marketplace, Market 168 parking lot from 4 to 8. This is one of our most anticipated events and includes a variety of fun activities, including games, trunk or treating, costume contests, and much more. For more information, please call 909-334-3258. And since the last council meeting, um, on the 20th, we had the Chino Day at the fair, uh, which was a lot of fun. Um, sadly, one of the floats broke down, so some of our dignitaries weren't able to actually ride in the parade, uh, but it was a lot of fun. Uh, on the 21st, I attended the Watermaster Appropriative Pool, uh, the advisory committee meeting, and the, um, it's called RIPCOM, uh, the um, maintenance committee, and then on the 28th, I attended the Watermaster Board of Directors. Lots going on with water. Uh, Councilman, or Mayor Pro Tem Howie, your report, please. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, well, I see the students picked a good night to come to a council meeting, because we didn't have a lot of business. It's going to be a short meeting, so you could, you didn't, at least you didn't get a two-hour meeting, and you, you won't have to stay all night at the council chambers. Um, what's that? We can extend it. Oh, okay. Well, that'd be all right. Okay, I guess I could talk for as long as yeah. I want, right? You've got <laughs> well, let me see now. Yeah, exactly. Um, so anyway, Chino Day at the fair on the 20th was a lot of fun. We, I don't, we lucked out on weather. Mm -hmm. It was, uh, you know, normally Chino Day at the fair is like 100 degrees and everybody's, you know, the heat's killing everybody. This year it, turned, it was about 80 degrees or whatever. It was just perfect day. And it was just great to see uh, Glenn and Cindy Duncan being honored as our heroes for 2017. Uh, much deserved uh, for them. And it was just an, another good day. And boy, the fair's come and gone. It'll be here next year before we know it. Uh, I attended a Water Facilities Authority board meeting on the 21st and also a Chino DeSalter Authority meeting on that day. And then on the 26th, the YMCA Golf Tournament was um, also, um, I got a little warmer for that one, but uh, we had a great time. We had a lot of people out there for the Y, raised, raised good money for the YMCA, and um, it's always fun to go to that tournament uh, and, and play there. Uh, on the 27th, uh, Council Member George and I, uh, we were we went over to Inland Empire Escrow uh, office where Linda Cooper and her company uh, received their uh, 
uh, they've been in business for 30 years in Chino, and we were able to, it's hard to believe, and we presented a, a certificate uh, from the city to her for 30 years, and you know, it's a small business. It's, uh, it's, it's quite an achievement to be able to hang in there for 30 years mm -hmm. and, and be successful, and they're still doing really well, and it's an it's a, it's a excellent company. Um, and so we had a good time there. Um, and then after that, we went to the police department sw uh, swear-in, I call it, where the police department uh, swore in four new officers and a couple of other employees. And it's always great to see the badge pinning that goes on for the, for the new officers, and they're all excited. They have their families there. Uh, and uh, they, as they start their careers with the Chino Police Department, uh, Karen, our police chief, is sitting out there. She's smiling. And I think uh, you, you, you've got some great new uh, employees that are going to be that are, will have a great career here in Chino. Um, the YMCA board meeting on the 28th, and then also on the 28th, the last thing was the uh, Skeet Neat um, Rancho Del Chino Rotary uh, fundraiser, which I attended, and uh, so did Council Member. I'm stealing most of his thunder. Um, he's crossing them off, <laughs> but uh, that was a, a great good event. We missed you this year, Eunice. You always like to come out and shoot. And uh, it's a lot of fun, and uh, we had um, good food and good friendships with a lot of people, and uh, it just, that's another great event. Uh, mm -hmm. this, the, this, it's a different type of fundraiser than a golf tournament, uh, the, uh, the uh, skate neat. So that's it. That's all I got. Okay. Councilman Elra. Yes, Mr. Mayor. Um, I also attended the Chino Day at the Fair. I hadn't been for about five years, and I was surprised on how many people were there. It was it was a nice event, and it was good to see Glenn and Cindy, and they're hanging around now. On uh, Friday the 22nd, I met with Larry Walker to talk about the sphere of influence and some other things that he has interest in. And then on the 26th, I met with the developer that wants to do what they call the Francis Project and uh, saw some renderings and uh, some of their input. And uh, that concludes my report, Mayor. Okay, Councilman George. Thank you, Mayor. Um, also, on the 20th, the Chino Day at the Fair, a lot of fun. Um, the, uh, and I just wanted to thank the staff for the great job they did. Everything was very well organized. But it would have been nice if you to put gas in that one float that we had. <laughs> so, but I won't hold you responsible for that. The, on the uh, 25th, uh, interesting day. Um, thanks to uh, Chief Shackelford and Captain Dave, uh, Dave Williams. I uh, had a ride along on the uh, on uh, one of the fire engines, uh, engine 65 out of the Ramona station, and the ride along jinx is, is still intact because absolutely nothing, you know, which is good, you know, absolutely nothing happened during the day, um, but just after they dropped me off, the canyon fire exploded out there, and engine 65 was the one that was dispatched to the canyon fire, and I said, thank you, thank you for not you know, not taking me out there, appreciate that. Uh, and then uh, that evening, uh, the Community Service Commission uh, met, and the, uh, the main topic was, was fireworks. And uh, I was able to do a presentation from the, uh, that I had picked up at uh, uh, California League of Cities conference, um, and hope that, hope that helped. It seemed to be a really, um, it was a very good, it was a very good meeting. Everybody was, you know, was calm, uh, good discussions, and uh, a lot of great things coming out of the, out of the commission and, uh, and uh, Linda Reich's group. Uh, on the uh, 27th, was with Tom at the uh, Inland Escrow Proclamation, and also the uh, Chino PD. Well, I call it a welcome ceremony. You can call it a swear ceremony if you want. But the um, and then the 28th, the skeet neat, and thank you to Rancho Del Chino Rotary for all that they donate to the community with the uh, what they uh, brought in at the uh, at the skeet neat. Shot a 12 gauge shotgun for the first time, probably the last time. The uh, but I did hit three skeet. Out of about I don't know how many thousand, but I did hit three. The um, and then on the 30th, the uh, culmination of the uh, of the events on this uh, for this evening, the uh, uh, Paul and I attended the uh, Chino Senior Citizens Club 54th Annual <laughs> Installation Luncheon, and I had to, you know, because on the uh, on the uh, their program it says that uh, I'm, that. Mayor Uloa was doing the presentation. I had to explain that I wasn't Mayor Uloa, so they, but they uh, had a great time with them. They're a very dynamic group. It was a lot of fun. The uh, uh, the Cordells were the uh, was the entertainment, and I thought, geez, an hour of entertainment. You know, this is going to be all. But they were outstanding. It's, it flew by. Now, uh, thank you, Brenda, for the for the apple because this the late Mrs. Cordell or whatever her name is. 
she shook something that looked just like this apple the entire time and you know, pretended like it was a gourd, but it was a gourd, so I lost a dollar on that bet. And so thank you, Brenda, for bringing me the apple. Uh, but anyway, got to install the new officers and rec recognize the outgoing officers, which just happened to be the same officers that were coming in and going out, which is, I guess, the, I guess that's uh, standard for, for that organization. A lot of fun, good group. And again, the staff did a great job setting, setting that up. That's it. Okay. Councilman Rodriguez. Uh, yes. Uh, thank you. Uh, I also attended the Chino Day at the fair, and it was very, very nice to have the weather with us. Oh. Uh, nice and cool, refreshing. Uh, exciting also. Uh, this last Friday, I attended uh, Senator Connie Leva's uh, second annual Young Men's Leadership Conference. And it was uh, very, very uh, enlightening in the sense that it really empowered over 200 high school students that attended. And it went over uh, many of the information that was impressive was it not only spoke about education, but it also spoke about different career opportunities. and. It seemed like every student uh, in attendance also received a tie, so they were taught how to uh, have some life skills, like all of us up here, or some of us. Yeah. Some of us. <laughs> <laughs> and and uh, I thought that was pretty neat. They had Jerry Garcia ties there, so I guess they were. But anyway, uh, on Saturday too, with uh, Gary, I also attended the Chino Senior uh, Club installation luncheon and. I can see how exciting it is for all the folks that are participating in, in that, those events and those different activities. And it really opened my eyes how valuable the Senior Center uh, is for all the uh, young people that go there. So thank you. Um, you know, Councilman Rodriguez, young people, it's all relative. You know, it's, I know, I'm in there too. <laughs> pretty sad when you go to the senior club and half of them are younger than you are. Yeah, exactly. And I've noticed that when I go. It's like, oh. <laughs> but they are fun. Uh, City Manager Matt, Matt Ballantyne, any reports? Thank you, Mayor and Council members. I do have one. Um, I want to report to the community about a potential, I'm sorry, upcoming uh, road closure on Pine Avenue. From October 9th to October 23rd, Pine Avenue will be closed from Euclid to Mill Creek. The purpose of the closure is to install some major utilities, specifically sewer and water facilities, in preparation of future road widening. We'll be posting detour maps, as you can see up here, um, and we'll also post it on our website and social media. But I would like to thank our residents in the preserve for their patience during these improvements. Um, and we want to thank the Lewis Operating Company for making those improvements. That concludes my report. Okay, City Attorney Fred Galante. Uh, hi, thank you, Mayor, members of the Council. Just a cheap plug for my presentation this coming Thursday on the Brown Act issues and uh, meeting decorum, very fun stuff. So highly encourage all to come and attend. <laughs> Exciting. Our Police Chief, Karen Constock. Good evening, Mayor, members of the City Council. I just want to take a moment to acknowledge um, our sympathy and our heartfelt prayers to all the, the City of Las Vegas, Nevada, and what happened in this tragedy on Sunday evening for Monday morning. Um, uh, there's been a lot of people, as you know, uh, both killed in that incident and hundreds injured. Mm -hmm. And it's a, another reminder to us that any one of these incidents can strike any of our communities at any time. You know, it hasn't quite been two years yet since the December 2nd terrorism attacks in San Bernardino. Then, of course, shortly after that, we had the Pulse nightclub in Florida, and here we are back close to the West Coast again in, in Las Vegas, Nevada. So in a time when you can feel hopeless about that and wondering, hey, what is it that I do to prepare myself to you know, survive one of these events, I'm pleased to say that a few times a year, the Chino Police Department co-instructs how to survive an active shooter incident at, at the Chino Police Department. We're hosting a class on October 12th at 6.30 p.m. But unfortunately, this class is full, probably because of what has just recently happened here this past weekend. I will make sure that our staff uh, schedules another training uh, course on this curriculum right away. It's insightful. And for the parents that are out there wondering if we do this same curriculum at the school level, yes, we do. It's called ALICE in all of our schools. We train uh, closely with the school district for an active shooter incident. But this one specifically is for you. What you can do is prepare yourself in the event you find yourself involved in one of these incidents. 
and it's not completely impossible to imagine from this point moving forward. It's a great curriculum. We're proud to teach it with the fire department. And of course, the national model is we want to prevent these incidents from happening to begin with. If you see something, please say something. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, we would rather uh, uh, detect and prevent an act of uh, uh, massive violence versus respond to it. Because after the act is set into the motion, the motive no longer matters. So please, we're very good at vetting uh, any threats at the school campus level or you know, in our community. But you, if you see something, say something. Our police officers and our personnel don't mind responding to these calls for service. And just get us the information and we'll handle it from there. Uh, may I answer any questions for you? Um, no. Will you be um, announcing when the classes at the school are? Uh, maybe we can run them on our website as so, well as the active shooter classes. Yeah, those classes are held uh, with the teachers at different uh, times uh, in, in training. So, oh, um, okay. so uh, they are sp uh, specifically scheduled with the uh, teachers' uh, uh, schedule their training schedule oh, okay but i just i want everybody to know that though for parents it's one of the biggest concerns i get when we have the parent forms parents come at me hey how can you guarantee that this incident is not going to happen on my school campus mm -hmm. i and i have to be up front and say i can't give you that guarantee but what i can tell you is we're, pre we're prepared we train the teachers how to this is not a this is not an evacuation this is an escape from incidents we're trying to get people away from these incidents as quickly as possible because one of the things we know is that people that can get away from them survive them uh, now, do and, you also yeah. train, or are there classes for the actual students? Yeah, we've talked about having that training done at a, at a pep rally, but we do encourage the teachers to engage the students, and the school resource officers engage the students about their responsibility during one of these incidents to cooperate <coughs> and you know, obey teachers' instructions. And the, the curriculum is quite robust with our school resource officers and the campus. We're, we're very proud of it, and ALICE is a nationally recognized model. It might be a good idea um, to offer a class taught to the students, maybe even in the auditorium or something, because I know for fire prevention, you know, just like the chief was saying, no two ways out, this kind of sure. stuff. It'd be good for the students to be familiar with what the teachers are learning as well, so it doesn't come, so they kind of know what to expect and what to listen for. Mira, I do know that specifically that training does come, uh, we do a lockdown drill with most of our campuses at least once a year, so I do know that that is part of their, their training at that time, so for them to not become familiar with it in some way, and those lockdown drills are taken quite seriously. Um, you know, part of the lockdown is once you lock that campus down, we have uh, people on the campus, you know, pounding on the doors trying to get in, and that's a no-no. Once those, once those doors are locked, unfortunately, you cannot open those doors and let somebody in. You don't know if you're letting the perpetrator in. So I do know that there is interaction between our SROs and, and the administrators on Campus Mirror to instruct the students and educate them of their responsibility as well. Okay. Uh, sheltering in place is, is a very real reality in any, any campus lockdown. And I'm, I'm pretty proud to say we've gotten quite good at it as far as you know, calling the lockdown and getting students in there and doing our best to protect them. And just I want to reassure the community that the members of the Chino Police Department, we train for this. There isn't a police department across the nation that isn't training to respond to these incidents. If uh, we, we know how to respond, then we know how to uh, uh, go after those attackers when, these, when they're committing these offenses and these attacks. We're, we're quite good at it. Um, We've actually done it. We've actually had our own active shooter incidents in town and responded, it responded well. Uh, I just want the, the public to know that, you know, should they have to make that call, that we are ready to answer it uh, uh, and, uh, and, our, and our personnel uh, trained to the concept uh, 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 about every other year along with members of the fire department. Well, I know RPD does a wonderful job, so does the fire department. It was interesting this morning, I like to listen to KSGN, which is 89.7. And they mentioned um, there was some poll that was done of communities that felt safe. And Chino, Chino Hills, and Rancho Cucamonga were the three cities that, that, were, that felt the most safe in the Inland Empire. I thought that was pretty cool. What a wonderful compliment. Uh, you know, at that concert on the night, uh, I don't know if any of you knew people that were there. You know, the, the age old adage is you're only six degrees removed from almost anybody, right? I had certainly employees that were there that night. Uh, we actually had one of our employees who took a, a piece of uh, shrapnel into the arm. So there's many of us across, uh, across this community and as well as the Southern California that have had you know, people impacted by this incident. So I encourage anybody, I, I, I do apologize that this class is full, but we'll get another class up and running soon, and I encourage people to attend. Yeah, thank you, Karen, very much. And it was a tragedy. I mean, it, 
the point that you make about if you see something, say something, is, is becoming so critical. Um, it just is so critical, and there's always some kind of signs to watch for. We don't want to be necessarily paranoid, but at the same time, um, if there was something that could have prevented that, those people that were killed, the 59 and the over 500 that were injured, I mean, there were 22,000 people there. Yes. And for someone to just open fire, just, what a tragedy. Yes, if you see something, say something, and remember, the, the, it's, it's a simple escape. Run, hide, fight, treat. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you, Karen. Me, can, I, can I make a quick comment? Yes. Uh, uh, Karen, it, it seems like we have so many people in these classes, the active shooter training can't get to everybody. Maybe there's a way, is there a, is there a video we could show on our cable channel that might be not, you know, an hour and a half, mm -hmm. but something that would give the basics of this that could play and would inform more of our people? Because if you have 50 people in a class, it's gonna take years before we get enough of our residents sure. to the actual active shooter training. So I don't know if we could do a video, if there's videos out there or something. Is there yeah. anything that could we could uh, maybe uh, have a link on our website. Huh? Have a link, have a link on yeah, our link website, on website or the or PD. something website. that could, you know, uh, get more exposure than just, um, you know, having 50 people in a room for a couple hours. I, have, I offer a great solution to that. First of all, we don't just treat that active shooter uh, curriculum just at these at these sessions. It's taught in our Citizens Academy. It's taught in our Youth Academy. Any opportunity we get to get this curriculum in front of people, like in, including the students of Alice, other people, we put it in front of them now. In fact, we're getting ready with members of the EMT to go through a tabletop exercise ourselves here in a couple of weeks. I would like to invite people to Google the Department of Homeland Security out of Houston, Texas on Run, Hide, Fight. Uh, the Department of Homeland Security out of Houston did, a, did an excellent video on Run, Hide, Fight. The only component missing there is the new component, which is TREAT. But if you watch just that uh, about 12 to 15 minute video, it does a great job explaining uh, how to survive an active shooter incident and what is going to happen when the first responders come. Department of Homeland Security out of Houston, and, and I want to say the, the, the mantra there is Ready Houston. And we actually modeled a lot of our curriculum uh, uh, behind that video. It's great advice. Okay. Okay. Thank you, Karen, very much. Gary? Karen, how are you? The, uh, when you talked about the, like the, the lockdowns of the schools, um, I'd like to compliment the, your department. Uh, I think it was a couple of years ago, I had three grandchildren at Rhodes when they locked Rhodes down yes. because right. of a, a, a shooter a lead shooter in the area. And um, the, the police department did a fantastic job. The school district did a great job. The students did a fantastic job and the teachers. I can't say as much for some of the parents who didn't understand what was what was going on. They were the ones that were banging, you know, trying to get in there, trying to get in there. But just, you know, what the fantastic job that you did. So, you know, the that on that lockdown it was, you know, compliment you on how well that was done. Thank you, Councilman. Thank you very much. And last, our fire chief, Tim Shackelford, as you dance your way up. You really would not want to see that. It's, <laughs> it's very bad. Again, once again, I'd like to thank Councilmember George for taking time out of the schedule to ride along with one of our crews. We do appreciate that. Uh, tomorrow night, the State of the Fire District, 4 p.m. at the Training Center with a presentation at 5, and that's uh, the council is, uh, has been invited. The public is also welcome to attend, and we would appreciate seeing them there. Uh, we are currently recruiting firefighter paramedics. We have eight vacancies. Uh, information for job requirements uh, can be found on our website. And I'd like to give you just a little more information on the t-shirts uh, beyond what uh, J.R. Ryan and Casey May provided. Uh, Tammy is uh, the wife of Brian Sanchez, one of our captains, uh, mother of five children, uh, I believe ages between five and 17 or 18. Uh, this is to support the Sanchez family with some expenses uh, that we anticipate. One of the messages that Tammy wanted us to make sure that we conveyed to the public was the significance and importance of early detection. Uh, her cancer was caught early, but it is very aggressive, and she has quite a battle ahead of her. Uh, so we want to let her know that we are here to support her. It's a fundraiser that the Firefighters Association started. The shirts are available for $20. There is information available on our website as well on how to purchase the shirts and our social media accounts. Okay. And thank you very much. We appreciate the time uh, this evening, Council. Thank you, Tim. Okay, I'd like to adjourn the meeting in memory of those that lost their lives in Las Vegas, as well as all those that were injured, um, and ask all of us to keep them in our prayers and our thoughts and touched a lot of lives. Our next regular meeting of the City Council will be held on Tuesday, October 17th at 7 o'clock. If closed session is necessary, it will be held at 6 o'clock. With that, we are adjourned.